Okay. No one said it. Well, how many of you are comfortable of making up, down, up, down, up, down? If not, go to V1. Here's a V1 rhythm strip. H real, H real, H real, H real, H real, H real. Here, no leads are helping us, but it has up down, up, down. See the slope is uh, parallel? This one, this one, this one. And uh, when the rates slow down, now that uh, flutter waves uh, showed up much better. We don't know what the rhythm is. It's a wide quartus. Is there a P in front of it or something else? Luckily, adenosine is available, and it showed the flutter waves. And luckily, this patient had a pacemaker so that the ventricular rate is not slower than this. But it can happen. We don't know what rhythm was. Adenosine was given. Look what happened. It beautifully demonstrated atrial flutter, but next to QRS is not occurring until way, way out there. Does that mean that when you're going to convert somebody for atrial flutter, you have to put an a, a pacemaker in? No, this happens very, very rarely. Some think of the conduction ratio is an even number, so like a 2 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1. No, it can be 3 to 1. Or many will have a fixed conduction ratio, that's why the QRSs are regular, but it could be irregularly irregular if the conduction ratio keeps changing. This patient, if you feel the pulse or listen to the heart, it will be just like atrial fibrillation. Atrial flutter rate, usually 300 per minute, can easily slow down to 200, and this is one example of it. So how many of you are comfortable of calling atrial flutter? None of us. And when the rate slows down, it can beautifully demonstrate up, down, up, down atrial flutter. The slowest atrial flutter rate, I mean the atrial rate, uh, it was 150 per minute while the patient was taking a procainamide down, up, down, up, down, 150 per minute. I'm talking about atrial rate. Ordinarily 300, but it can easily slow down to 200 on a rare occasion, even down to uh, 150 per minute. After procainamine was uh, stopped, the rate sped up somewhat. Some might think, oh, beautiful atrial flutter, dom, 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 dom. But QRS is a regular, which means if it is atrial flutter, there has to be fixed conduction ratio, like a 4 to 1, 3 to 1, or whatever. In which case, what appears to be flutter wave, and the QRS should maintain a fixed conduction, a fixed relationship. Does it? No. It's on top of it. It's in the valley, it's in the downstroke, it's in the upstroke. Something is uh, telling me that it's not atrial flutter. And also this one tells me that something else is happening. This is a patient with a Parkinsonism. The pill rolling movement conveniently is about 300 per minute many times, and uh, it can simulate atrial flutter. So not only we miss atrial flutter, but something else can mimic uh, atrial flutter. Looks like a beautiful atrial flutter waves, but the same thing. QRS is a regular, which means it has to be a fixed conduction ratio in which case the flutter wave and the QRS should maintain fixed relationship. It doesn't. So this is someone who was shivering doing it. 
Well, some electrical artifacts uh, can simulate atrial flutter, but the notice that QRS is occurring regularly, and there's a P wave there, so ignore some of those artifacts. Some might think, here's a V1, dom, 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 dom. Well, the valley to valley should march out. They don't. Long, short, long, short. So this is an inverted P from left atrial enlargement combined with the inverted T wave that may make you think briefly of a dom, dom, dom. This one too, from different patient, one might think, oh, it's a atrial flutter of dom, dom, dom. No, the valley to valley doesn't match out, so it's a inverted P and inverted T. What's the rhythm here? We cannot tell. Sometimes a PVC can be very useful. During the compensatory pause, the flutter wave can be very effectively revealed. Well, another example from different patient, PVC, we don't know what the rhythm is. One might suggest, well, maybe up, sloping down, but uh, nobody can be certain, and here's an intact flutter wave. Of course, you should be able to recognize that this is a flutter wave. So from different patients, uh, just to make you familiar with the flutter waves, uh, I collected uh, other, from other patients, uh, sloping down, then dip. Either dome, dome, or up, sloping down. Well, just like uh, there are many breeds of dogs, uh, you have to know what dogs look like to be able to say, oh, that's a dog. Should you say that's a cat? No. <laughs> so flutter wave, many times we say up, down, up, down, sawtooth pattern. Yes, that's what we talked about the most frequently, but it could be dom, 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 dom. If it is a slow atrial flutter uh, ra uh, rate, uh, then it could be up, slanting down, dip, up, slanting down, and dip, but it has to slant down. If it is a blip, then isoelectric, blip, and isoelectric, this is an atrial tachycardia originating from the atrium, low atrium, then it can reveal negative or inverted P in inferior leads. So from here to here has to ever so slightly slanting down. That's a very important. So flutter wave can manifest this way or that way or that way. If it is this, uh, completely horizontal and isoelectric, it's not atrial flutter. Hmm? Yeah, this is in lead two. How many of you think uh, this is atrial flora? Many will say P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R, S, T. Let's see what happens during the compensatory pause after the PVC. Atrial, atrial, atrial. It beautifully demonstrates that it is an atrial flora, atrial, 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 atrial. So sometimes the PVCs can be useful. Nobody wants to have a PVCs because they are troublemakers, but uh, at times it could be very useful. Now you had the better control of the uh, uh, conduction uh, ratio, so you don't need the help of the PVC, but PVCs are still very anxious to help you. So what's the rhythm here? from the same patient. Are we back to this situation? I couldn't tell. Are we back to in this situation or is it different rhythm? I'm looking for PVC. What do you conclude? She's smooth, only one P, not like here, blip, 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 blip. Now PVC is allowing us to say that the patient has converted from atrial flutter to normal sinus rhythm. See how useful the PVCs can be here as well as here. Sometimes a wide QRS tachycardia can be VTAC 
it can be one-to-one -one conduction in a patient whose flow rate slowed down. Why the QRS tachycardia? Is this VTAC? Later, there's a group beating. Group beating, we should always first think of a wen phenomenon. Well, what do I look for? There's an atrial activity here. Another one could be hidden. Then group beating, wen phenomenon. Can I make wen phenomenon? I like to have a PR lengthening, but we don't have a P to allow it to say it's lengthening and blocked. So we have to go to secondary characteristics of the Wenkebach phenomenon, which I mentioned before, of the group of the cycle here, the first RR is always slightly longer than second one. Well, the last one is, uh, uh, it has its own mind, so I just ignore it, but at least the first one and the second one should be clearly longer or wider and narrow, yeah, longer and shorter, longer and shorter. Combine that with the not being able to two of these in the pause, that's the characteristic of a secondary characteristics of a Wenkebach phenomenon. So uh, you can uh, draw a diagram like that. You put one more dot than the number of the QRSs. So four here, then you put five dots, three here, then you put four dots, then you can make a Wenke bark out of it. And uh, the limb leads uh, shows that uh, uh, well, precordially V1, indeed there's uh, atrial activities there, conducted promptly, delay, blocked, promptly, delay, blocked. Well, at that rate, about 220 or 200, it could be ectopic atrial tachycardia, or it could be atrial flutter. Which one is it? At this point, you need to see the flutter wave. Without that, you cannot uh, make the distinction between atrial tachycardia and the atrial flutter. So you are looking for typical flutter waves. Well, do we see one? We have to go to inferior leads. I'm looking for PVC and see whether there's a flood away. Let's see whether, uh, okay, here. PVC, beautiful flood away. Again, only from one you can make the diagnosis. Same thing. We have only one chance. Don't miss it. Another example, atrial flutter with a one-to-one -one conduction. At 300 per minute, our AV node just cannot conduct the one-to-one. -one. But if it slows, the flutter rate slows down to atrial rate, slows down to 200 or 220, oh yes, that AV conduction can conduct the one-to-one. -one. That's what we are seeing here. And this patient too, with a carotid sinus massage, there's a group beating, three, four, four, three, and always the first one is a slightly longer than next one. You cannot put two of these in here. Typical example of a four to three, four to three, five to four AV when kebab phenomenon. So you are allowed to put atrial, 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 atrial. So that's the atrial flora. And with the uh, either carotid sinus massage or a valsalva maneuver, you can unreveal that the flora wave convincingly. Atrial flora with a uh, three to one or two to one conduction here. Which uh, when the race slows down, then you can see the flora wave will get very carefully and then one-to-one -one conduction will make it look like a VTAP. Atrial flora and definite electrical alternance, tall, short, tall, short. Should we think of a tamponade? No, electrical alternance only during sinus rhythm is a tamponade. Electrical alternance is well known to occur in cases of SVTs, atrial flora, or even VTAP. 
interesting patient. Uh, this patient had a slow atrial flutter day after day. Then suddenly, it all went away. The baseline is a flat and wide QRS, very slow. So they called you stat potassium. What did it, what did it show? 7.3, 7.4. As you know, hyperkalemia will make a T wave tall and tented, make a QRS widen out. P wave becomes a flatter, flatter. At certain point, atrial muscle is paralyzed. So atrial flora, very busy here, it's atrial muscle is paralyzed. And the ventricle is escaping? No, it's still sinus node driving the ventricle without a P because atrial muscle is paralyzed called the sinoventricular rhythm during hyperkalemia. Everybody has been looking very carefully for whether there's an internodal specialized conduction system between the sinus node and uh, AV node. Nobody could find any specialized tissue. So uh, we've been debating, is there a specialized conduction system between the sinus node and uh, AV node? This is a physiological proof that it is there. So this is called the sinoventricular rhythm, sinoventricular rhythm. No P, no flutter wave because atrial muscle is paralyzed at this point. Same patient that was in when? November. It didn't say what year. It may be ancient time or sometime. January, same patient, doing the same thing. Slow atrial flutter, then all of a sudden like that. So you are called, hey, your patient went into wide quad as a slow rhythm. So you again say stat potassium. This is from January, the other one was from November. Same thing was happening. Then as the potassium was corrected, uh, now sinus node picked, or no, not si sinus node was there all along. Uh, atrial muscle now paralyzed, uh, now recovered, so there's a P wave. Another example of a sinoventricular rhythm during hyperkalemia. Talking about hyperkalemia, we always uh, think of a tall T wave. But more importantly, sometimes it may just to do this in one lead. No other leads, but only one lead in V2, the base of the T becomes narrow, T become, uh, comes together, T becomes narrow, and T is tented. This is a more important sign of a hyperkalemia. So whenever you encounter this kind of a T, be sure to check the potassium. Don't wait for, it doesn't have to be tall, tall. It could be just like that. And this was an example of a proven hyperkalemia. Okay, lastly, this rhythm, uh, little rhythm strip told me a whole story. The whole story as to what's happening and why it is happening. This is a patient who came in with after palpitations. So what's happening? Atrial flutter with a three to two AV Winterbach phenomenon. Do I see flutter waves? No. How can I do that? What's causing it? Thyrotoxicosis. Have I seen the patient? No. How can I do this? Important observations to make is QRS is all narrow. None of them are originating from the ventricle. The average heart rate is 200 per minute. QRS complexes are paired. The longer cycle, you cannot put two of these in here. From another patient, when somebody has atrial tachycardia or 
whatever, a regular atrial rhythm like that, having three to two Wenkebach phenomenon, period of short, period of long, blocked, period of short, long, blocked, and you cannot put two of this in here. That's a typical, typical three to two AV Wenkebach phenomenon. That's why I'm able to say this is uh, three to two AV Wenkebach phenomenon. So three to two Wenkebach phenomenon with a ventricular rate 200 per minute, What's the atrial rhythm? Atrial rate has to be 300 per minute. Regularly occurring atrial rhythm at a rate 300 per minute, only one thing will do it, atrial flutter. So at that uh, rate, you don't have to find out the flutter waves. It's guaranteed that it's going to be there. In fact, uh, this is a rhythm strip that we're looking at. Look at the V1. Atrial short, atrial long, atrial blocked. Here, you can, with a little stretch of imagination, up, down, up, down, up, down. Well, we don't actually need that. Regular atrial rhythm at a rate 300 per minute, only one thing will do it. As I put here, various rate range in various rhythms. So if it is a regular atrial rhythm at a rate, say 200 or 220, it could be many things. But if it is a close to 300 per minute, only one thing will do it, atrial flutter. So if it is a regular atrial rhythm at that rate, you don't have to actually see the flutter waves. But at this rate, yes, you have to see the flutter wave to be able to say it is an atrial flutter. So, can you go back to that higher EKG one more? There's uh, a couple of electrical alternates at the current ticket in these three. Yeah, uh huh. And for an AVR TC and a fast flow, like what causes electrical alternates? Um, is it not known, but it is well known that it occurs, but we don't know why. But it's important to know that electrical alternance during SVTs, atrial flutter or VTAG can occur without anything being wrong in the pericardium. Only during sinus rhythm, you think of a tamponade. And indeed, with the carotid sinus massage, see this was a rhythm strip that we showed? Two together, two together, two together. Beautiful flutter, flutter waves. So we went to see the patient. Uh, well, then ordinarily, 300 per minute, patient would not be able to conduct 200 per minute, usually about 150 with a 2 to 1 AV conduction. This means that something is lubricating the a this patient's AV node. What's lubricating it? I can think of only two things catecholamines or thyroid hormone, which is more common, pheochromocytoma or hyperthyroidism? I'm sure you will all say, of course, hyperthyroidism. That's why I was able to say, this patient has an atrial flutter with a three to two just by looking at this. And we can say, this patient must have a thyrotoxicosis. And when we went to see the patient, indeed, she had a huge gold. Thyroid gland, you don't have to feel it. Many times, you just see, have the patient lift up the chin, have the patient swallow, and big lump will come up and down. Then you know it's there. You don't have to go to patient's back and uh, feel the neck. So that's what happened. Wouldn't it be nice by just looking at this? You can say, I know what's happening. I know why it's happening. And you feel good after making the diagnosis. I like you to all feel good when you are going home. <laughs> go home feeling good rather than I'm exhausted. Oh, I cannot do this anymore. Okay, I finished in time. You have a little extra time too. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your attention.
Either way, it's all load here. So if you want to print your PowerPoint, you have to print it. Okay, that's one. Thank you. Thank you.